Hello again. This is uh, Red Hat Dan on Tech. This is Dan Walsh. Um, I'm just back from vacation, um, and I uh, wanted to basically continue on our AI um, chain. And today I'm uh, bringing in Eric Curtin, a principal software engineer from Red Hat and Vehicle Operating System. And uh, Eric uh, came to me a few months ago and uh, introduced a a new pro side project that he's been fooling around with um, and that we renamed to Rama Lama. And the, the basic idea of Rama Lama is to make running AI models really, really simple um, and almost boring, I think you usually say. So Eric, you want to take it away and to explain to you what Rama Lama is? Yeah, so I, I think you explained this quite well. Um, a while ago when this new AI craze um, came along, um, I, personally, I knew nothing about AI at the time, and I fooled around with a couple of the AI frameworks that were out there and a couple of AI inferencing tools. And basically, some of them are more complex to use than others um, for many different reasons. There's, there's many different AI frameworks. There's many different, different types of hardware you can run these workloads on, and... Basically, I, I wanted to simplify that the best I can. And as you said, make it just work or boring. Um, so that was the initial idea. And then we then, and then we extended um, to add even more ideas because um, w one thing we noticed with the popularity of the, the Hugging Face repo and the uh, Olama registry for storing models, um, we re we realized there's there's a lot of similarities here with OCI registries because um, OCI registries are um, are well suited for storing multi gigabyte um, data and pushing and pulling um, multi multi gigabyte um, streams of data such such as model files um, and yeah so we're we're trying to um, add features to the tool. To the tool like these features so um and make them really 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 easy to use so you don't really care if you're running on what hardware you're running on um the commands are all podman like commands simple two or three word commands to to get things moving yeah so, so basically you run a, a rama lama command and it goes out to one of the different types of registries and pulls down an AI model, you know, specified AI model, then you just start running it as a chatbot is, is the basic idea. Um, I think one of the cool things uh, that we wanted to do when we started working on this project is to make sure that it was um, a red, uh, AI model registry agnostic. So we wanted to support um, Olama, we wanted to support sort of hugging face, and then we wanted just generally to allow you to store these images as OCI images and then have um, the Rama Lama tool figure out which which type of registry to pull the content from. Um, so anyways, it sounds like it'd be really cool to see a demo. You got a demo you can show me? Yeah, I can, I can share. Um, this is the first time I think I demoed the, the Mac OS version. Um, so one thing that's cool about the Mac OS version is um, it's accelerated. It can, it can take advantage of the GPU on the um, SOC on M1, M2, M3, those modern Apple chips. Um, but this is it running in Linux. If you've ever used containers before, you'll, you'll probably recognize this format of the table. But um, basically, when you do a RAM and I'm a list, you'll get a list of different models. Um, so here's a hugging face one. Um, and here's several from Olama. Um, yeah, so these, well, these are models that you previously pulled to the system. So these are local models. Yeah, yeah. So these are ones I pulled. Um, you could, you could um, create a model locally and push it. Um, it's not something we've explored a lot yet, but the functionality is there. But yeah, just to give an example of what it, how it works, this is this is one of the models called Granite Code. 
So Granite Code is an open source uh, model from um, IBM, which is all about um, writing code. And here we are um, with running our chatbot using um, Granite Code, the IBM open source model. So I'm just going to ask a question, right? Um, how do I write a container file and build a container image using Podman? I haven't done this before. This model is a three billion parameter model, which means it's not the smartest, but it's um so I, I asked the question, how do I write a container file and build a container image using Podman? And it gave me some some steps here to write a container file and build a container image using Podman. You can follow the steps below. Um, open the terminal. Um, navigate to the directory where your doc file is located, which is the same thing, and run this build command. And I'm I'm not I'm not satisfied with that answer, so now I'm going to say that's great. But what does a container file look like? Can I see an example? Container file. So now it's 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 after printing us a con example container file, um, and the container file basically contains this Python script it decided to write for the container file, and it's telling us this is how you can write a simple Flask application to run in a container. Um, and now it sounds asking me a question, but um, I'm going to be ignorant and leave that unanswered for now. <laughs> Very cool. So basically, with a simple command like that, you're you're running the AI model in a chatbot, and you could just start interacting with it and actually start experimenting with different models. So you could use the same command to to run different models, and if the model hasn't been pulled locally. Um, Rama Lama will automatically pull it from uh, the different registries. Yeah, no, yeah, that's that's correct. It's it'll it'll be, anybody who's used Podman or Docker before should be should be very familiar with the, with that style of um, working with things. Um, it it tends to behave like Podman would behave. If your model isn't there, it'll try and fetch it from somewhere, and then it'll run it or serve it if you want to. Um, run a server for other tools to query the model. So a server would be like a REST API that other other uh, applications, right, other applications to query against the, the running model at that point. Um, but I, I find that really interesting that, you know, we've talked in previous weeks about things like uh, Instruct Lab and training different models and granite models. And uh, a lot of people are just playing around with models at this point. And uh, what I see, you know, the big advantage of Rama Lama is it makes it really easy to just start playing a model and, you know, figure out which model works best for you. If you're using something like a struct lab and training it, you can use this tool to, to test against it and um, tell people, you know, you push it up to a, push up your train model to a registry and then tell, you know, 10 of your friends, hey, just run this Rama Lama command and you can start, you know, querying against the uh, newly trained model. Um, or when third parties, uh, IBMs and Metas and Mistrals of the world for least new versions. You can just pull them down and start playing with the, those models right away. Uh, one of the one of the interesting things where we talked about this, uh, one of the difficulties uh, with the uh, AI models is actually configuring the GPUs on the host. So, uh, tell us what your plans are for uh, being able to configure the GPUs. Yeah. So th this is actually the. <laughs> The third rewrite of the tool, but on, on previous prototypes of the tool, um, basically what we would do is we would um, we would um, query the system and try and figure out what's what's the primary GPU available on that system, 
And based on that, we, we would pull a certain container runtime, which has all the dependencies required for, for that GPU. And um, that's actually quite powerful at the, at the moment. Uh, it's quite powerful in terms of these inferencing tools um, because they're not very well modulized at present. So if you were to build one of these inferencing tools for with support for all the hardware types, it, it can quickly add up to basically like 100 gigabytes. So by, by auto detecting the GPU um, needed, uh, pulling down that runtime and poking the correct holes in in the um, container um, you can minimize the amount of bytes pulled and you can simplify uh, uh, running your workload without actually even having to necessarily know what your underlying hardware is on a given machine oh very cool so so underneath the covers we'd be using a tool like bodman to uh, pull down the container image with all of the tools for your GPU and then running your your model inside of that container um, using those those specified tools so that the uh, you know, GPU will get lit, lit correctly for that machine. So you don't even have to modify your host machine to, to run the GPU correctly, um, making this a lot easier. Uh, lastly, underneath the covers, I, I think the really cool thing about this is really not a hell of a lot of code doing this. We're, we're taking advantage of um, AI runtimes. And the one we're using like right now is uh, Llama CPP. Um, but uh, there's also a pull request you have to support uh, BLM that's working its way through um, requirements. So we want to want to sort of build up so similar to you know, the Docker on the container, uh, Docker on the Podman world. Um, that we treat these runtimes and allow you to specify if you will have a specific AI runtime you want to use for your model or one that works perhaps better for certain situations and certain types of hardware, um, then you can swap out um, your your uh, a engine, I guess. I'm not sure of the correct term. Um, so you have any comments on that? Yeah, no, I, I think AI engine is a, is a good term for that. Sometimes I call it AI runtime. So, so I think um, that's, for me, that's actually a key feature because with Llama, Llama CPP was, it was initially written to, to run on local Apple machines uh, like M1, M2, M3 SOCs. And it was later extended to, to run on many different types of like, consumer grade GPUs that you might run locally in, in your house, say it like an eight gigabyte AMD card or 16 gigabyte, um, uh, Nvidia card, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but in enterprise, there are, there are alternate runtimes that are getting popular. And one of which is the one you mentioned, uh, VLLM. So VLLM is kind of. Whereas, so Lama CPP started with the goal of running on consumer grade uh, GPUs. Something like VLLM was more designed to run on enterprise level um, GPUs. So what that means is like, maybe you could test little minified models on your local machine, but then if you wanted to run it on like a proper AI server in the cloud with lots of resources, you could switch the runtime to use, say, VLLM. Um, yeah, so I think that's quite powerful. Yeah, I think that's great because it also does entice us in because I think over time the prop might be more AI engines or AI, more AI runtimes being developed and we want to be able to um, bake on top of them. I think the, the key thing that you and I would love to see from people is we'd love to see more contributors. You know, this is all written in Python, so it's fairly, uh, uh, simple, low level, uh, low barrier to entry to come in and uh, work on it. Uh, we'd love to have more contributors. And if you go to GitHub containers slash Rama Lama um, and check out uh, issues and uh, anything you can do to help, would be great. Well, thanks, Eric, for uh, joining me today. And uh, I hope uh, uh, it looks good. And I hope to be able to see this be packaged up for Fedora and uh, other distributions fairly soon. Thanks a lot.